Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. On Roku, in the sports section, the vanity code is Dwyer Boxing News, one word. On iTunes, one word, Dwyer Boxing News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk about the NBA. Just some brief thoughts for gamblers. Um, the season's just started. Today is Halloween, October 31st, 2014. First, let's talk about the team that's favored, according to Las Vegas, to win the 2014-2015 championship, and that's the Cleveland Cavaliers. You're getting a plus 300 on them. In my opinion, this is one of the worst bets on the board. I would stay away from Cleveland. I don't think they're that good. Let's talk about it. You know, the NBA really thrives on chemistry. The teams that climb the mountain are teams like the San Antonio Spurs, where the players know each other's games. They've been together for a long time. The bullets start flying, and guys know where other guys are going to be. Right? Teammates understand long-standing teammates. Think back to when LeBron first joined the Miami Heat. They were favored in that year's NBA championship, and they lost to the Dallas Mavericks, right? As good as LeBron, Wade, and Bosch were at the time, and let's remember, at the time, they were viewed as the big three, three of the best players in the league. They weren't able to work out the kinks in one year, right? The creases were there. They folded up. Right? Well, now I'm supposed to believe that LeBron James is going to seamlessly fit with Kyrie Irving and Kevin Love. Right? There's a long road to travel, folks. Kevin Love hasn't had playoff success. Right? LeBron has never played with Kyrie Irving. There are two schools of thought on Kyrie Irving. Half the world thinks he's a one. The other half of the world thinks he's a two, right? And so to me, this team is going to have problems. Let's also talk about the leadership. You know, LeBron's a great player. LeBron has been successful. I would argue that LeBron is more of a politician than a leader, right? He's not Magic. He's not Jordan in the people skills department. You can sense that just from reading the comments of people who know him, his teammates from last year. Chris Bosh these days won't even talk about it. Right? Dwayne Wade calls last year a very difficult year. Right? Keep in mind, that's a year in which the Miami Heat actually made it to an NBA Finals. Let's also roll back the clock a little bit. You remember... LeBron at one point after the season, right, asked to meet with Pat Riley to figure out if the Miami Heat were serious about winning a championship. Now, think about it. Few people in the league have had more success over the years than Pat Riley. Few. Think about it. The Heat annually were making the NBA Finals. To me, this is on par with a player asking to speak with Jerry Buss back in the Laker heyday or George Steinbrenner back in the Yankee heyday, right, to find out if the owner is committed to winning. This would be like Tom Brady suddenly deciding that he needed to speak with Robert Kraft to find out if the New England Patriots were serious about winning, right? Count me among those who views... LeBron is really more of an image guy doing things for image purposes than for real purposes. Let's just say I wouldn't expect Tim Duncan to suddenly demand to speak with San Antonio Spur ownership or management, you know, to have to speak with Greg Popovich to find out whether or not the San Antonio Spurs are serious about winning, right? I believe that was more for us, the consumer, than it was for LeBron. Also, you may recall, we went through different stages during the offseason. 
where first LeBron supposedly wanted to see if the team was willing to win. Then LeBron met with teammates. You remember the reports. They were meeting over lunch or coffee or whatever, right? And keep in mind, his teammates at the time, Bosch and Wade, had contracts, but they had the right to opt out. And there was a question, given that Wade had had knee problems and wasn't playing back-to-back -back games, on whether Dwayne Wade would get the money that he was promised from the Miami Heat from other teams. So, of course, we found out just how deep the water ran in Miami, right? Bosch and Wade seemed to believe that there was more loyalty there than existed. And so Bosch and Wade quickly announced, as you may recall, that they were going to opt out of their deals. They were prepared to work to do whatever it took to keep LeBron James in Miami. And in return, LeBron James stated publicly that he wanted the max. We then started hearing how LeBron had never been the highest paid player on his team during his career. And then, of course, LeBron decides to leave Wade and Bosch to go back to Cleveland, right? I don't fault him. I just wonder about the politics and all the posturing, right? Cleveland's a great place, but, you know, to get there, the dude, if he were a leader, would have just said, hey, I'm going back home day one. Day one. Instead, he chose this path. It's a personality thing. He leaves to go back to Cleveland, and of course, he decides, given the disaster that was the announcement years ago on ESPN, he decides he's just going to release a letter through SI.com. Right? LeBron, if you always knew you were going to go back to Cleveland, why were you dog and ponying us? Dog and ponying the people who had a portion of your success the last few years by meeting with Pat Riley. Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh. To me, you know, I'm looking forward to the future, not the past. When I see a dog and pony show like this, I know the guy is not a leader, and I know his team's going to be lacking in leadership because he's one of the best players on his team. So I'm fading the Cleveland Cavaliers. You've got to be kidding me. I see several teams better than the Cavs on the horizon. Keep in mind, just in the Eastern Conference, the Cavs are a plus 300. You're getting better than twice those odds. You're getting better than twice that rate of return. By taking the Chicago Bulls at plus 700. What am I missing here? Derrick Rose is back and he looks like Derrick Rose. Paul Gasol is one of the secrets to Kobe Bryant's success. Let's be real with Kobe for a second here. I know Kobe's calling guys soft and... You know, Kobe, who used to be Mr. Moist himself, is now trying to play OG in the league, right? These young guys aren't old enough to remember when Kobe had an afro and was viewed as soft. Well, let me just say this. Don't you think any of the great superstars in history, right? Let's say Michael Jordan. Don't you think Michael Jordan would have won at least three rings in a row with prime Shaquille O'Neal? Does anyone watching this video not recall the force that was prime Shaquille O'Neal? Does anyone watching this video not recall the team they had around the two of them? Folks, the Lakers were loaded. I'm tired of people telling me Kobe's won all these rings. Kobe was on some all-star teams. This isn't exactly like LeBron with Larry Hughes. Right? All I'm saying is, Prime Jordan, hell, Charles Barkley, would have been winning rings with that Laker team. An argument can even be made that that Laker team, as dominant as they were, the three-peat team with Shaq and the uh, crew, weren't even as dominant as they could have been because they were getting tested by teams like the Sacramento Kings. Well, let's fast forward a little bit. Kobe picks up two more rings. You know what? Look at those teams. How many superstars in this league have had Andrew Bynum and Paul Gasol on their teams? 
Guys, they had twin towers. Forget what I'm saying. Look at the numbers of those teams. Right, so let's just say Kobe had help. Kobe didn't win five rings on his own. Right, so, you know, let me just say this. Now Kobe is practically on his own. The Lakers are going to be overvalued for at least the next month. Right, the Lakers are like the Dallas Cowboys. Everyone loves to bet on them. The Lions get bid up because of the history of the team. People are paying for Laker bets today, and they seem to think that they're getting Jerry West, Wilt, and Elgin Baylor. Or they're getting Magic, Kareem, and Worthy. They're not. They're getting Kobe and two guys off the side of milk cartons. Right? They're getting Kobe and guys like Jeremy Lin and Carlos Boozer. Now, hey, maybe that formula might win you some games in the Eastern Conference. Sadly, the Lakers are still in the Pacific time zone and they play out west. It ain't happening, folks. Right? You want to fade the Los Angeles Lakers. Let me talk about a team that is a beast out west. The Dallas Mavericks, they're much better than advertised. Right now, they're 25 to 1, right? While the world is looking at the Golden State Warriors, and the Warriors have a lot of underrated talent, Draymond Green can play. Look at Andrew Bogut's four blocks out the gate his first game, right? Steph Curry, to me, is going to be an all-star for a long time. He's an all-star right now. Simply put, he is the best shooter in this league, right? The only guy in the reference frame in terms of pure shooting is Kyle Korver, right? Let me hear from you, YouTube Nation, on that. I'll say this. You know, as good as Golden State is, they don't have the defense that the Dallas Mavericks have, right? Tyson Chandler is back. Wearing a Maverick uniform. I'm a Knicks fan, and let me just say, he looks better in Mav colors than he did Nick colors. By the way, let me digress for a second on the Knicks. You know, the Knicks aren't that good. The Knicks have a first-year head coach, right? That's tough in and of itself. The Knicks are basically Carmelo and supporting cast, right? Guys like Amari Stoudemire... You should expect him to play no more than 60 games this year, right? He's so bad off physically, he couldn't even get fully insured for a prior contract that he had, right? But yet the Knicks went into Cleveland and beat Cleveland in Cleveland. In other words, Cleveland's at the point where they're struggling against teams like the Knicks that didn't even make the playoffs last year. Don't be confused by that first... Cleveland Knicks game that took place this season, right? It's not that the Knicks are better than advertised. They're not, right? It's just that Cleveland's that bad. Let me point out, too, you know, the Pat, the uh, hype. I forget the GM's name. Wow. Uh, Jordan's former coach. Here's the problem with him. Phil Jackson. Here's the problem with him. He's the GM. How many other teams are you buying into simply because of the GM, right? GMs have limited power. You know, even the great GMs, even the great GMs in the league, uh, you know, San Antonio's GM. Let's face it, it's really more about the coach and the players than it is the GM, right? Phil Jackson's not coaching the Knicks. He's not. The guy who is... Derek Fisher is a first-year head coach. Don't get carried away by the Knicks' success early in the year. Let's face it, too. The Knicks have some players who, quite frankly, and it's just my opinion, are crackpots. Uh, J.R. Smith, really, um, when's the last time you saw a guy like that winning an NBA championship? Right? So, I would fade the Knicks. But let's get back to the Dallas Mavericks. You know, Dallas has quietly put together some hard-nosed veterans, right? Chandler Parsons, Jameer Nelson, right? They still have Dirk Nowitzki. Look at how their first game, 
against the San Antonio Spurs ended. They should have won that game. They were up late, right? As it was, Chandler Parsons had a clear look at the basket and missed the shot in the closing seconds, right? Of all the values on the board in the Western Conference, and trust me, I'm staying away from the West on futures props because there's too much talent there, right? But of all the talent on the board in the Western Conference, I believe the best risk-reward proposition are the Dallas Mavericks at 25 to 1, right? I'm a guy who believes that teams like the Clippers with, um, you know, guys who can't hit the side of the barn from the free throw line, like DeAndre Jordan, um, have a little bit of a ceiling on them. I know a lot of people are hot and bothered about the Clippers. Uh, I just don't believe that they have the best mix. I just don't see how the J.J. Reddicks of the world can turn it on defensively. Right? So, I'm a bit of a skeptic on the Clippers. Uh, I'm a bit of a skeptic on the Houston Rockets. I don't know what they were thinking, letting Chandler Parsons leave. That seems a bit ridiculous to me. The other problem is Dwight Howard. You can stop him simply by fouling him. Dwight Howard at the free throw line is about a 50% free throw shooter. Right? He's in the 50s. And so, to me, again, in this league, when important players can't hit free throws... That's a big cause for concern. I don't think the Dallas Mavericks have the same level of problems that some of these other teams do. Finally, let's talk about first-year players. They often get overlooked. I want to direct everyone's attention to the Orlando Magic. There is a uh, guy who was a low lottery pick, a 10th or 11th uh, pick in the NBA draft. Right? He's a guy who is young. He's like 20 years old. His name's Alfred Payton. This guy's the best passer on the team. The guy's first two games in the league, he got seven assists both games. He's lightning quick. He's great defensively. He's 6'4". He has size. If you're in a fantasy pool that's a keeper pool, in other words... This guy's a rookie. We know this league is tough on rookie point guards. You have the ball. They're going to be turnovers. Other teams are going to test you. You're going to be running into screens, right? But if you're in a keeper league, this guy looks like he's a future all-star. Again, his name is Alfred Payton. Right now, he's a starting point guard for the Orlando Magic. He's a better passer than Luke Ridnour today. Let's talk about another guy who seems to be getting rough press right now because he's having some problems. Looks like he is a streak shooter. Doesn't hit his shot with regularity. Looks like he's a little bit too thin. He's getting pushed around on the court. But I'm here to tell you that the first pick of the draft, Andrew Wiggins, is the real deal. Right? The quickness. The vertical. The fact that he, too, is tall. He's like 6'8 or something like that. His defense right now, I think this guy is legit. He had a rough start to his career, a rough couple of games, right? Everyone wants to gun for the first pick of the draft. But the material is there to work with, right? You don't get athletes like this coming into the league too often. Right? There are times when this guy, quite frankly, dare I say, looks like Jordan. Now, I'm not saying he is Jordan. Jordan obviously stayed longer in school than Andrew Wiggins. But let's just say, Jordan, Kobe, that level of athleticism, coordination, explosiveness, this kid has that potential. Right? In other words, you know, you think Jordan, you think Kobe, you're thinking elite athlete. Right? I mean, elite on a level most superstars are not. Right? Coordination and stuff like that. Wiggins looks like he has that potential to me. If some guy in your fantasy pool is disillusioned because Wiggins hasn't come in scoring 25 points a game and hasn't been routinely hitting a 15-18 footer, now's the time to make the trade before 
the covers are taken off and we see him in all his glory, right? So Andrew Wiggins, let's just say I've been impressed. For me, it's more important that a rookie have the physical capability of playing in the NBA than it is that he have refined skills at this point in his career, right? Wiggins, to me, the upside is obvious. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And if there are other teams out there <coughs> that you feel are <coughs> undervalued, if there are other players that you feel are being overlooked, and let me just say, for those of you who haven't been paying attention, Lance Stevenson looks like he is a superstar with his new team, right? In fact, the Charlotte Bobcats deserve a hard look, right? If there are teams out there that you feel are betting opportunities, I hope you leave them in the comment section to this video. Let's talk about it. Thanks for stopping by. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com.